Hello and welcome back. The hobo and still working on a girlfriend wrestling show. I'm the one and only hobo Tom. And again, I'd like to thank everyone who watched my Impact Rebellion kind of R R and R show. Yeah, I'd like to thank everyone, and I thanked a whole bunch of people yesterday. So I have to continue because I didn't have enough gifts to give people. And I didn't want to repeat things on the same show, so I think there's new one gif. Yeah, if you ever leave a comment, email, or I know that you subscribed, you get a little gift dedicated to you. Um, for the most part, right after the show, I'll shout your name a lot during the show. Or worse comes to worse, it's, 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 it's on like the next second show. Or something like that. So let's start this list off so I can get into some SmackDown Live, because there's only, I think, May, June, July, August, September, like five or six months, and then SmackDown goes to Fox, and that's going to be on Friday night. I still have some other stuff I have to get done today, because I was up, I think, today at 8.30. I think right now I'm looking good. Go to bed at one, get a nine hour nap and I think if I did get a pretty decent nap today. I'm kind of feeling just a little beat up and tired. So let's get this show started. Flix! You are that luchador on a forklift. Pistachio BB67, you are a six count. You've earned that.
lustrous hair. Dixie Queez, you, sir, are playing that air drum and air guitar. And hot brar, you just got that a uh, victory by dirty pin. And finally, A G. You are an honorary member of the El Generico Band. And so that's, that concludes all the shout-outs. Again, if you want to get your name mentioned on this YouTube show, I was going to say, glorious YouTube show, but I know it's not. <laughs> this is Hobo Production. You can see the scruff. Just haven't been at the one job in five days and just said, I'm not shaving. I'm going to go scruffy for five days. I am Hobo Tom. I should be scruffier. At least more consistent. But let's talk about SmackDown. We got all the shoutouts. Um, first of all, Boo Ohio State. M go blue. I bleed maize and blue. Go blue. I support you. M go blue. Dun, 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 the champions of the West. Go blue. Oh, Michigan born, Michigan bred. And when I go, I'll be. And I do bleed my maze during the college season. Hoops, not so much. College football. I think so. One time, I actually refused to my family. It was the day of the Michigan Notre Dame game. And the one day I refused to talk to Dan. Another friend of mine is a day of the Michigan State Michigan game. So that's the way it is in life, folks. So we just boo Ohio State. Ohio State sucks. Um, so with that being said, Kofi comes out for a promo. Um, Ko comes out. Um, he gets jumped by Xavier Woods. Of course, Xavier Woods is in no condition to do anything. Xavier Woods just gets beat up. And that leads to our first match of the evening. We have Bailey versus 
Bucky Lynch. And as they're doing the promos, they shoot to uh, the back. Um, Woods is in medical. He has ice pack on his shoulder. It was weird because of back hurts. You really don't want to put the ice pack on his shoulder. The ice pack should be on the back. Continuity. But enough about that. Um, we have Bailey versus Becky Lynch. Um, Bailey's definitely getting more aggressive. This was actually a pretty. This was a fun match. I think the only thing it, uh, uh, I didn't like about it. I'm not a big Bailey fan. So whenever I see Bailey wrestle, it's just like, eh. I don't know. I I understand the girl next door, but if you're gonna be the girl next door, you kind of have to look like the girl next door. Not like the wrestling girl next door. It's a quibble, and I'm sure there are many people that like Bailey, and I'm sure she's a nice person outside the ring. But I was never enthralled with Bailey the wrestler. Again, she came off way too naive for me in days in NXT before she was champion. I don't know. Hey, listen to each throne. Um, Bailey definitely is getting more aggressive, though. Um, Becky had a tough time with her, even though Becky did have that amazing drop kit from the top rope. So pretty cool. And of course, they, uh, they hit the double clothesline on each other. Um, I almost got scared figuring they, they would do a, a double pin. Because sometimes they do do that way too often. I think if they, they did that with Sasha and Bailey, was it? Sasha and Charlotte they did it with too? That was a while ago. Again, you can always feel free to leave a comment so you don't know what you're talking about. Go back, watch your tapes. Well, or watch YouTube. I know there's somewhere. Things on YouTube. It's kind of cool. Um, eventually, Bailey does get caught. Uh, she goes for the, the macho elbow. Again, I don't like People stealing moves and acknowledging, oh, it was, it was gifted from the Macho Man. There's only one Macho Elbow. That's by this guy, the Macho Man, Randy Savage. Ooh, yeah. The insane elbow looks good. Again, the, thing, the purple Rainmaker is good. They don't at least reference this at the Macho Elbow with the big elbow drop. And Kyrie Sane and Velveteen Dream get to get a height. The Macho Man, I don't think he ever got. He just kind of jumped off the rope. Those two jump up and then off the rope. Um, so uh, uh, Becky gets her knees up. Uh, Bailey goes for something else. Becky gets her in the disarmor. Bailey taps. And I kind of like Becky's new outfit. It shows a little muffin top on, on, on Becky, though. Makes her look. I like that. Shows off Becky's midsection. Yeah, and I do need that girlfriend one day. Um, eventually, Charlotte co comes out, destroys both of them. She stands tall, but for the most part, it was fun. It was an enjoyable match. Again, really hard to screw up. And it was hard to screw up. You know, that's a cheeseburger match. Then we have an Alistair Black. Oh, he just kind of rambles on. Um, it's also announced that Bailey is going to be one of the four SmackDown women. So I guess there's eight, which is fairly impressive. That's a, that's a lot of people in a ring. I think normally it's like six or seven. Look at them fitting everyone. Um, Jeff and Matt Hardy come out. I have to give the title. I think Jeff really did do something to his leg. And it's not something they're going to have them just kind of work through. So it's, if it's something like that, it's probably a lot worse than, than what they were thinking. So it's probably a tear of something. There's so many ligaments in the leg, mainly the knee and ankle if you tear. That's, you're, that's kind of done for a while. Then Lars Sullivan comes out. Matt Hardy tries to protect his brother like the good brother should. Oh, wait, that's a, lot, that's a different tag team. This is the Hardy Boys. Yes! Because they're wonderful. Matt Hardy tried to delete Lars Sullivan and make him obsolete. 
But that didn't happen. Um, Lars beats up Matt. He starts to threaten Jeff. Our truth comes out. Our truth gets destroyed for his for his problems. Jeff kind of sulks away. Lars Sullivan. It'll be interesting to see what they actually do with him. And then they announced the four men from SmackDown. It's going to be Ali, Mustafa Ali. I like the fact that they've gone to single names. Mustafa Ali, Finn Balor, Andrade Almas, Andrade Cien Almas. I stand corrected. And Randy Orton. And I guess Money in the Bank is going to go back to being that B-level pay-per-view, mainly because they're not featuring the belt. Finn's in a man. I think Samoa Joe is facing Rey Mysterio. Seth Rollins versus AJ Styles. It's going to be Kofi Kingston and Kevin Owens. Um, I don't know if the women's tag belts are going to be on the line. We'll see. But we'll get to that. Because the next match, you have Kyrie Sane and Asuka, the newest version of the Jumping Bomb Angels. They took that for me. I want my quarter. Actually, no, no more copyrights. I'm, I'm good for life. Versus Red-Headed Poison Ivy Jobber and Tall Ebony Jobber. Don't even know who they were. Um, it was a squash match. Uh, of course, the, the taller jobber started to, to, to reach up to do the Greco-Roman test of strength. Kyrie Sane short, so she just kind of patted Kyrie Sane on the head. Kyrie Sane was having none of it. She destroyed her. Um, got Asuka in the ring. Uh, eventually, redhead jobber came in. I think got a slap on top. Ooh. Got a slap onto Asuka. Asuka destroyed her. She ate the code breaker and then the instant elbow. I mean, obviously, Kyrie Sane and Asuka aren't going to lose to Jobbers. It was a squash match. Once, once you knew it was, once you realized who they were facing, they got the Jobber, they got the Jobber entrance and the Jobber look. It was okay. It, it was a can of soup. I understand what they're doing. They're trying to build up, build up, and show how strong they are. <sighs> they could have done that. Really? Oh wow, the women's division stacked though. They could have called up Alicia Fox and Dana Brooke, or at least some NXT stars like Deanna De 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 Perrazzo to deserve to be in the Oscar lock after her mocking of my princess, Kimberly. Still not going to get over that. Then there was a, a, a Mandy Rose and Boo Sonya Deville things backstage, and Mandy Rose kind of talked her way. Where she, Mandy Rose is also going to be in Money in the Bank. So I guess that would leave Carmella for one more spot. It's not a woman in the division. How are you saying, Asuka? Carmella. Naomi's over there. Becky's defending both belts. So who's going to be the third woman? From S SmackDown. Again, email and, and or comment me. I can only think of Mandy Rose, Carmella, Bailey, Sasha Banks. Already, I don't like that. That's starting out to be the snooze match, folks. Then our next match is Roman Reigns in a handicap match versus the B team. After he comes out, and of course, references the fact that he punched McMahon. Everyone likes it when a McMahon gets punched. Um, Shane, of course, said, This is what happens when you go hit my dad. You have a, a handicap match with Elias as a special. Guest enforcer. What Elias doesn't realize, if you're the guest and guest enforcer, you have to go full guest enforcer and just show up shirtless, jeans, 
in cowboy boots. Just like Michael P.S. Hayes did way back in the day. Yeah, that shows my age. Um, for the most part, Roman Reigns holds his own. Um, first part of the match, he races out of the B-team's corner because the whole B-team tactics is they want to isolate him in the corner. Makes sense. That's what you do as a tag team. Um, eventually, he gets stuck in the corner. And Reigns a little bit. Elias makes his present felt, gets his licks in. Um, <laughs> that was a rough pump. I'll get to that in a moment. Um, but again, the super mountain pinch is for everyone. Uh, there was no guitar spot. Elias teased the guitar spot. Um, I thought I, for, a, for a second there, I thought Axel, Axel was actually going to win with the perfect flex. But then, of course, we had the, the rough spot. And I know they're referees, so they're not as tough as the wrestlers. But I forget, and there's the internet video. The one referee actually gets his leg broken via Sid style, where you could really tell that leg was the toes pointed in the opposite direction than the knee. That's not good. But just to be pulled out, you're like unconscious. And like this referee finished the match with a broken leg. Continuity, WWE. Um, then we have a replay of the Firefly Funhouse. It was fun. It is what it is. And then this is the... Oh, and that match. I'm sorry, that match. That was actually a ham sandwich. Wasn't bad. Wasn't anything terrific, though. Then we have the Firefly Funhouse repetition. Then for the last wrestling match, we have Ali and Finn versus Andrade, Cien Almas, and Randy Orton. And there's already tension between Randy Orton and Andrade, Cien Almas. I think this is one of those moments where no one likes working with Randy Orton because they know he's going to charm him. So Andrade says, you know what? I know you're going to get me. So I'm going to get you first, but not right now. And again, for Randy Orton's abilities, it's probably like zero. Or, uh, you know what? I'll, I'll give it 10%. I'll give it a 10 on a scale of 100. Because the only zero I know of is Bobo Tom. He just doesn't like it. I, I just don't like anyone. I won't tag with anyone. I'll bite your nose and pile drive you and steal all your aluminum. This was a fun match. Um, Ali's in the ring. He gets beat up first by both Ren Yorn and Andrade Cien Almas. Um, Finn eventually does get the hot tag. Andrade's awesome, though. Um, Selena Vega does get involved. There's a pretty cool, bot, pretty, pretty cool spot where they do the opposite way, running the ropes opposite direction dives for both Finn and Ali. Um, Finn set up the missile drop kick. And then I'll tagged in Ali. So they were actually working fairly well as a team. Um, so then Ali hit the 054. He got the pinfall over Andrade Almas. Finn, however, eats an RKO. I think Andrade Almas just kind of rolls out of the ring. Uh, Randy Orton kind of slithers out of the ring. And Ali stands tall. No, he's not winning money in the bank. Money in the bank. That's Mustafa Ali. But, I mean, for the most part, this was a really fun match. Heel versus face, and I think it's way too early for this stuff. Because there's still, like, three... Yeah, about three weeks away. Yeah, three weeks from... Sunday. Yeah, about two weeks from Sunday. So they could have held this over a while. It was a fun match. Again, nothing wrong with it. And if nothing's wrong with it... A good cheeseburger match. Then in the final segment we have the Kevin Owens show. Um, he summons Kofi King. He summons Xavier Woods. <laughs> puts on an Xavier Woods toy. Brings out a Big E toy. Big e, the Big E toy has his has leg all wrapped up. So it says this is garbage. You're trash. I don't think he uses any stronger language. Dumps the chair over. Kofi comes out. They just start to brawl. Uh, Kofi gets the better of it. 
Eventually, Kevin Owens does sneak out, uh, jumps jumps the rail. Kofi Kofi Kingston stands tall. It was okay. Uh, this is one of those those SmackDowns. Normally, SmackDowns a lot better. Uh, this is a meh SmackDown. I mean, it wasn't bad. It really wasn't anything that you'd really want to tune into. So it kind of went along with that, that whole raw vibe where it's like, I understand, but it's not. It's okay. I mean, the wrestling action was, was good. It just was, meh. So again, um, again, the one programming note on Cinco de Mayo on Sunday. I'm going to have my own wrestling show. The Daytona Beach Bum Fight League Wrestling. And so that's going to be kind of a special post on Sunday. Monday again, Raw. Tuesday, SmackDown. I don't think there's a special show until maybe the 18th where I go to Sanford for NXT. Maybe. I have to see if I'm, if I'm fishing or, or what that weekend. I do want to, because bottom fishing opened up. Bottom fishing in Florida is good. And I think it's also the time for. Mahi Mahi King Mackerel. Really good. King Mackerel, really oily. You can only eat so much of it. You have to grill it. You have to grill all that oil off. 25th, I am going to NXT for Daytona Beach. And I think, other than that, it's just um, maybe Memorial Day will have a special match. So that's kind of the whole calendar for the month. Yeah, and I'd like to thank all of those that tuned in. And I'll just list their names out again. Let's see here. We have Donnie Murdoch, Wrestling Fan 01, Big Sexy, Big Sexy, sorry, David Barlow, The C Nation Dog, Rick Davis, Jonathan Panetta, Sean Harrington, UDM MI6 9, Slicks, Stasio BB67, Ixie Quees. Never heard that before. Anhart Brar and AG. And thank you guys very much and have a good night. Bye.